So real quick, let's give it up for Sean, Jesse, and Omar. It's on tape. So, I like all these definitions. These are all good. There is no one definition for parkour, and that's kind of one of the things I like about it. But one of the definitions I hear, one of the sillier definitions I hear, is jumping from rooftop to rooftop. It's kind of stupid if you think about it. Uh, one of the best definitions of parkour I heard is from a 12-year-old girl in the studio Mars. She said, it's, it's like dancing, but all the time, everyone. <laughs> like that. <laughs> That's almost exactly what it feels like. That's what it looks like, right? Visually, it kind of looks elegant and flowy. Um, and experientially, it's kind of like that as well. Practically, it feels kind of like you're dancing. It's rhythmic. It's not self-conscious. <laughs> also, no one gets better at it when they're drunk. Contrary to what they might tell you. One of the best definitions of parkour, well, one of the typical definitions I hear, almost literally every weekend, at least one person goes something like, it's the most efficient way to get from point A to point B. Have you guys ever heard anything like that about parkour? I mean, if you stop and think about that for more than 10 seconds, your BS detector should go off. It's certainly not the most efficient way to get from one place to another. And then there's this focus, which I think of as kind of uniquely American, and I personally hate this definition, because it's equating the, this discipline that I love to racing, right? It's getting from point A to point B quickly, and I don't, I don't think of it like that. Uh, parkour isn't always about getting to a destination. Uh, watch this. Parkour is the ultimate expression of unforeseen consequences by architects. 
It's taking a look at the things in your environment and then turning things totally on, on their head. The safety equipment becomes dangerous and daring. The structural elements become playful and encourage experimentation. And textures can be life-threatening, as anyone who's ever tried to wall run a sandy or gritty wall probably knows, or vault a wax-covered rail in a skate park. They can also be friendly, but if your shoes stick to them pretty well. Which leads me to my personal definition of parkour, which is something like this. Parkour is the art and discipline of moving through your environment in an interesting and elegant way. And that's still, you know, okay, it's wordy. I don't think it'll ever catch on. No one's ever going to be like a parkour an interesting and elegant way. But I submit that it's worth thinking about because of these two words, interesting and elegant. They're subjective, right? And what's interesting to you might not be so interesting to me. I know people who are exceptional at rail work. I know people who are really, really good at going up walls. And I know people who are amazing masters at flipping and tricking. And all these things fall in the same definition under parkour. And that's why I like it. So I'm trying to lead you with all, somewhere with all this. You know, bear with me. Uh, um, I want to show you a park in Arlington, Virginia, called Gateway Park. Uh, <laughs> okay. well, this is Gateway Park in Arlington. This is one of our favorite places to, uh, to train. We love Gateway Park because there's a lot of different stuff you can do in here. There's all sorts of walls, rails, walkways, scaffolding elements. And also, no one really bothers us when we train here. It's another reason we love it. <laughs> so, you guys may be used to doing this already. I want you to look beyond the slightly 1980s look of things for a moment and get to the actual basics of this, the structures you see. The elements we love most are all on display. There's low walls to encourage climbing and vaulting and practicing. Multiple levels of structure, terracing to kind of lead you further into the park. There's ramps and walkways and rails. They're all there to kind of dare you to try something slightly outside your comfort zone. There's grass in many places so that you don't die and screw up. Although really not enough grass. <laughs> So these are obvious elements that make a place good for parkour. And I could stand in front of you and make a plea to design and create more places that are good for parkour. In fact, yeah, why not? I, please do that. Uh, design more places that are good for parkour. We would love that. But also, design places that are simply fun to explore, that encourage playfulness. Resist the litigious nature that currently characterizes American society. Not everything that is designed and built should be perfectly safe. And to that end, I want to leave you with the most subversive structure, which to be fair is actually a sculpture, not a building, that I've ever seen. It's famous in parkour circles, and it's almost totally unknown to the rest of the world. Behold, the Dame, the Dame du Lac in France. subversive, right? Architecture that allows and even encourages people to do things that are unforeseen and thereby explore their own limits. Architecture that pushes people to be physical and experiment with their own bodies and their knowledge of the environment around them. Blatant defiance of what we call conventional wisdom that says that people should stay on walkways, should only ever use the stairs in a normal way, should stay off the grass, should look at the trees but never touch them. This is a challenge I pose to you because so far as I know, there haven't been any serious attempts at this in, in America. But why not? So this is my vision, at least for a part of the future of American architect architecture. More interesting spaces, spaces that can be used in different ways, spaces that are less easily defined, or whose structures don't confine you. Spaces that encourage and allow people to become what they have the potential to be. Thank you.
And uh, just to give you a quick little thing about it, it had the features of big architects, majority angle group, uh, architecture, and then a number of individuals seeking a new voice for the common ground. Um, and, and basically, you know, you want to sort of take it, take it in in terms of uh, the content and what they're looking at, but look at, again, uh, the whole atmosphere of, of how the, the documentary is shown and, and so forth. After the, the, the movie's over with, don't jump out of your seats yet. I want to talk about uh, the upcoming film uh, next, and then any, and I'd like to even gather a couple of thoughts if you guys have any thoughts uh, uh, about the film or, or anything that you've seen tonight. Okay, so enjoy, and, uh, and thanks so much for coming out.